Hello dear viewers and welcome to RTD's English News Edition, the major stories for tonight are The head of state is the first stone for the construction of 840 apartments in Bilbala, PK-13 And in the Middle East, the West Bank are in the tension after the death of several Palestinians Thank you for joining us on RTD channel. The President of the Republic, His Excellency Ismail Mergiri, proceeded on Wednesday to the laying of foundation stone for the construction of 800 apartments located at PK-13 in Balbala. The site on which these buildings will be built will be equipped with basic infrastructure such as an internal road network, paved roads, a parking at the foot of the buildings, drinking water supply, electrification of the site and public lighting. It will be added other socio-economic infrastructure including a neighborhood, schools, a health center, a security post, an annex of the civil protection, a bus station, a community development center, a sports center, and a recreational playground. Uh, these 840 apartments will be built by the Saudi Development Fund. The general manager of fund operations, Mr. Fauzi bin Olayan Al Saud, took part in this ceremony of laying the foundation stone. In addition to the presence of the head of state and the first lady, Mrs. Khadr, Mohammed Haid also took part in this ceremony. The Prime Minister Abdul Qadir Kamil Mohammed, the President of the National Assembly Mohammed Ahmed, the members of the government, as well as the civil and military authorities invited for this occasion. The implementation of this major project was entrusted to the APITA Fund, a public institution under the supervision of the Ministry Delegate to the Ministry of Housing, Urban Planning and Environment in charge of housing. This project is a clear demonstration of the government's desire to increase the supply of decent and affordable housing to our citizens. <laughs> Director General of Operations of the Saudi Fund for Development, Mr. Fauzi bin al Al Saud, delivered a speech in which he stressed the importance of construction project of 840 housing units in the Belbela suburbs for the benefit of the most deprived. He stressed that the fund contributes to the financing of this project is estimated at $30 million, which confirms the continued support of the government of the two holy mosques serving King Salman bin Abdulaziz for the government of Djibouti led by the president Ismail Mergeli. Mr. Fauzi said that the Saudi Development Fund is following uh, with great interest the efforts of the government of Djibouti to advance the country in the economic and social spheres, while at the same time committing measures and prudent measures to adapt to changing conditions of the world. 
And for her part, the minister in charge of housing, Mrs. Amina Abdiadin, reminded that the government is making constant efforts to meet the demands of housing of our fellow citizens. She said that several projects have been launched, including the project Zero Petonville or the foundation EOG, Right to the Housing. The minister said at the third meeting of the cabinet this year that the demand for housing is greater than the supply. And according to the Minister of Housing, Mr. Musa Mohammed Ahmed, this is a new batch of housing in the category of social housing. This is in line with the policy of the President of the Republic to reduce the lack of housing in very short time, added the Minister. The government intends to establish this policy of construction of 5,000 homes per year, which will balance the supply and demand. The right to housing is enshrined in the Universal Charter of Human Rights in the socio-economic component, said the Minister of Housing. And for this occasion, the head of state has delivered a speech mentioning that this project has been possible thanks to the excellent collaboration with the Saudi Fund for Development, the government of the kingdom of the Saudi Arabia and the Saudi people. Let's listen to him. Continuing uh, his speech in small language, the head of state, His Excellency Smile Mergele, said we are working to build more and more to respond to the most needy ones in order to ensure them an affordable life to provide them with comfortable proximity. Let's listen to the president. The housing issue is bigger than the Ministry of Housing. The housing issue is bigger than the Departments of Housing itself. It is with a great pleasure that I welcome you all, especially His Excellency Yusuf al Bassam and the members of the Saudi Fund for Development. This is important in itself. The project for which we lay the foundation stone today is as a result of a fruitful partnership with our brothers from the Saudi Fund Development. This is a clear evidence of the strength of fraternal bond between the Republic of Djibouti and our brothers from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the government and its people. This is yet another proof, however, that we are moving forward to implement a very important project, which is to provide adequate housing for every citizen. I said it, and I will always repeat, the issue of housing is a, a fundamental right for all of us. And given the priority for us, me and my government, we seek to achieve in the near future. As I have promised, 2017 will be the year of housing. The project which we are building consists of 840 apartments, each consisting of two rooms and a living room. This new neighborhood, as described in the flyers that have been distributed to each and one of you, includes all the necessary equipment for life, including equipped roads, parking lot, and sports fields. Therefore, we can only express our gratitude to the Saudi Fund Development, which has financed this project in response to our request in this regard. In fact, this project is not the first real estate project funded by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and will not be the last, because we are in the process of, of concluding a new agreement on another similar project. We ask God the Almighty to help us to continue the fruitful cooperation between our two countries for the benefit of our two brothers' people. Finally, I propose on behalf of the Djiboutian people first to thank the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for its generous and continuous support and the Saudi Fund for Development. May this be a brand new day with a bright future for Balbala and Djibouti. In speaking in the Somali language, the head of state said that this, this project will help the citizens uh, to have an affordable life, to pro provide them with comfortable proximity housing and an average rent to enable the biggest Djibouti citizens to pay them. It is necessary to note that increasing the number of buildings in a country is a sign of economic growth, said the president. And at the end of the series of interventions, the President of the Republic has given the kickoff of the, for the construction of 840 houses in BK13 in Belbela. The construction work of the 840,000 F3 type apartments distributed in 42 buildings north of BK13 will be carried out on site that will be equipped with socio-economic infrastructures. 
In fact, apart from the construction of the apartments, the works will include the creation of an internal road network that includes 15 paved roads, a car park in the foot of the buildings, the addiction of, to the drinking water network, the electrification of the site and public lighting in order to welcome future residents in good conditions. Various public facilities are programmed. In this project, the construction of a health center, a security post, and an ex of civil protection, a bus station, a computer community development center is planned as well. And more in the national news, the Prime Minister Abdul Qadir Kamil Mohammed received this Wednesday at the end of the morning a strong Saudi delegation led by the Saudi Minister of Transport Dr. Nabil bin Mohammed Al Lamoudi and took part in this interview on the Djibouti inside the Minister of Equipment and Transport Mohammed Abdul Qadir, the Secretary General of the Prime Minister Nagib Abdullah, and the Ambassador of Djibouti to Riyadh, Mr. D.I.D. Bamakurma, and the President of the Ports and Free Zones Authorities, Abdul Abubakir Hedi. The Prime Minister welcomed the Saudi delegation to Djibouti and stressed that the bilateral relations between the two countries is historic and fruitful. He highlighted that the various projects carried out and financed by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for a long time, which he said were vital for the economic development of the country, and expressed his thanks for this important support. In addition, Prime Minister said that the transport sector in line with the country's Vision 2035 plans to make the country a regional logistic hub linking neighboring countries by improving the level of service delivered in land, sea, and air transport. The Kufia the Financial Audit and Information System Working Group is meeting in Djibouti from 7 to 9 February for the program on the audits of the Sustainable Development Goals at SDGs. The representative of the member countries of the Regional Training Center for Supreme Audit Institutions of Francophone Sub-Saharan Africa are reflecting in Djibouti on the methodology for auditing the sustainable uh, development goals according to the Code of Auditors. This three-day work is part of the particular context marked by a twofold concern for the professionalization of Supreme Audit Institutions and the significant contribution of Supreme Aud Audit Institutions to the Sustainable Development Program of the United Nations by 2003. Their main purpose is to improve and harmonize public finance control techniques in the QFF area, which is the Regional Training Center Council for the Supreme Audit Institution in Sub-Saharan Africa. The Minister of uh, Women and Family, Muna Ahmed Hassan, chaired last Monday the headquarters of the Regional Council of Abu a distribution ceremony of a empowerment kits to uh, two associations beneficiaries of the project Empowerment of Women in Building Communities. The Prefect of the Obok Region, Hassan Dabel Ahmed, the, prefect, the President of the Regional Council, uh, Mr. Mohamed Ahmed Smile, and the various women's associations of the region took part in this donation ceremony. Upon her arrival, the minister was treated to a warm welcome by a cheering crowd waiting for her at the entrance of the Regional Council. Then inside the premises of the Regional Council, the minister had a meeting with the beneficiaries of the project who thanked her for the support to the association that benefited from this project to guarantee the empowerment of women. In her intervention, the minister made a small reminder of the genesis of this project carried out in several phrases uh, branching from identification of associations to training uh, through the granting of materials and establishment of Obok Women Cooperative. The minister also reaffirmed the determination to work for the empowerment of Djiboutian women. She added that during the year 2018, her department is committed to do more to improve the living conditions of rural women. Under the high patronage of delegate minister in charge of decentralization, the exchange project workshop between the actors of decentralization and the members of a network called United Cities and Local uh, Governments of Africa closed yesterday at the Sheraton Hotel. The work of this workshop began on Monday. This workshop is involved in the participation of representative of the mayor, the members of executive committees of the region and commons, representative of the technical and sectoral ministries concerned in addition to the heads and executives of the delegate ministry in charge of decentralization. The participation in this workshop of a delegation of the network called United Cities and Local Governments of Africa results of the effort of the Ministry of Decentralization to increase contacts between this continental organization and national local authorities. The Directorate of uh, Investigations and Heritage conducted a tour of the various premises of custom services and its management into the national treasury. 
to distribute a form of a declaration of assets to the various officials holding public funds. This is a part of the fight against corruption to promote good governance. The meeting was chaired by the Director of Investigation and Heritage, Mr. Hamza Abdiadin, and the Director General of Customs, Gulayt Ahmed Yusuf. The declaration of patrimony is an issue in order to make legal all positions by those responsible. And on the news outside our borders, since the United States recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, at least 23 Palestinians have been killed. Tensions and violence in the West Bank continue where clashes broke out between young Palestinians and Israeli forces. The protesting youth wanted to express their anger and the deaths of several Palestinians killed by the IDF during the search operations to connection with the killings of two rabbis last Monday in 9 January. 17 Palestinians were arrested Tuesday evening in Nablus. One of these Israeli army search operations had already resulted in clashes with young Palestinians. There were several wounded and wounded among the protesters. It is here we close this edition. Thank you for joining us on RTD and have a good night.